Give it up for Pastor Patty. I love you. I adore you. Just bear with me. I'm normally like, whoa, all over the place. So still recovering from my surgery. But I, I love you all so much. How many of you have never heard me before? Oh, you get, what? What? You get to go to heaven. Isn't that awesome? No, I, I don't think I'm all that in a bag of chips. It's Jesus. But I love y'all so much. I was so, can I just talk for a minute, and then we'll get into, like, the word, like, family talk. So I had the surgery, this female surgery. And I think I had, I think it was, like, 65 stitches total, like, all here. And um, I got an infection, right, you know, gross. I actually sent the picture to Pastor Paul and Patty. <laughs> And they're, they're like, eh, I'm going to show this on Sunday. I'm like, no, please don't. It was so disgusting. Like, I filled up this towel with all this oozy, gross stuff that was, like, coming out of my body. I know if you have a weak stomach, don't eat your cupcake now, okay? Because it's, it's totally going to gross you out. <laughs> and so, anyway, um, it just rocked my world. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to come here to minister. And I thought I planned my surgery just at the right time. Now, granted, long story short, I had all these female different issues and blah, blah, blah. And so I thought, okay, surely, Lord, I'm going to deal with this issue. And then I felt like the woman with the issue of blood. And then I felt like the woman with, like, all, how many of you know I'm talking about? Hormones all over the place. I'm like, I got all the issues. God, I need deliverance. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, I need to sing that song. So I went to see my doctor, and he says, you cannot go on the trip. I was like, what? He goes, you have a horrible infection. You cannot go on this trip. You must cancel this. Was it after that they had to cut me open? Was it after that, Sully? He said, gross, Mom. And they brought me in the doctor. So anyway, it was so bad. It literally, I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't even have time to go to the ER or, or the operating room. I was in his office, and he, my sister-in-law was there holding my hand. And he had to cut me open and open my stitches right there. I was freaking out, y'all. It was so bad. I screamed, and I'm sweating, and I'm hyperventilating. And then, as if it wasn't any worse, how many moms in here? Okay. Like childbirth. He goes, what you're going to have to do is just milk that. I'm like, milk what? What are you? The only milk I like is chocolate milk. I'm like, milk what? And so he, anyway, gross. You track him with me. So it was just disgusting, all the things I had to walk through. And with the middle of all that, as if that wasn't enough, my husband was um, hunting with John Maxwell. I'm like, I hope you shoot your eye out, you know? I know that's bad. I needed to repent later. So why am I telling you all this? Just because I just wanted to tell you, like, this story. Is that okay? So, But I'm sitting there in this rocking chair, and I was just crying, and I was dreading the fact of calling my friends. And just for the first time in, like, 20 years, I was going to have to change a ministry event. And if it was any other event, I probably would have been sad, really sad. But I was even more sad because I love y'all that much. Like, my heart was, I don't know how to articulate. Just There's places that you just feel so loved and celebrated, and you always look forward to coming. And y'all are one of those. So it blessed my heart so much that there's so much love here. And you always, thank you. And you always make me feel so special. Oh, I have a hair out of place. It's bad. It's, bad. it's like, turn that off. It's a, it's a rat's nest right, right about there. Just put an emoji or something over there. But, man, your pastors were so amazing and so gracious. And they're like, no, don't worry about it. No problem. And I'm just thank God for every single one of you. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit has something so valuable and so significant for us. And while I was sitting there, I'm like, I am going to give the devil, like, an extra fat black eye because you're not going to take away what belongs to God's people from them, from me, nothing. And then when Pastor um, Paul had called, <laughs> now backtrack, um, is the story boring you? Is you okay like hearing my story? So I backtrack like a few weeks ago. I had a church in Brooklyn I was supposed to minister at and they're like, oh, you know, things came up. Would you mind at all? We're so sorry. I know you're planning on being here, but can we change the 11th and the 12th? Can we please change it to the summer of 2020? And I'm like, sure, no problem. And those were the only two dates that I had left the entire month. So don't think that God did not hook that up. So he like set it up weeks in advance. So why do I say that? Because if God cares that much about these details, when we don't even realize, he loves us so much. He cares about every little thing. And his word says, how many of you read the Bible? It says, I will make perfect those things, perfect those things that concern you. And in my heart tonight, we're just going to pray. And, and I can still move around, but I just try and use wisdom and be careful because I am still healing, you know. It's like, if, it's like my stomach's all hard and weird and... I never, ever, those of you who heard my story, 
How many of you have heard, like, I don't like to wear pants or shorts because, like, I had scars from my dad when he was abusive, like, had kicked me with boot tips on. And so it's a big deal that I'm not only, like, wearing this skirt and this dress, but then, like, I've got really pale legs. But whatever. That's, like, that's just my real authentic self. I, I'm like, oh, God, I'm wearing a dress up here. Praise the Lord. I like leggings, and they just fit better with elastic. But anyway, and then I've got granny panties under here because i got to hide everything up. I'm like, my God, these things are huge and horrible. But I have to wear them because they come up over my incision. So anyway, that's like a lot of personal information, but that's what I'm dealing with <laughs> right now. So Anyway, I just thought I'd make you laugh at my expense and all the craziness, but I really want the Lord to do something significant. And Holy Spirit, I just love you so much. I love these precious people. They are your daughters. They are so fearfully and wonderfully made, created in the image and likeness of you. And I thank you that we've just invited you into this place. Your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. And when the praises come up, your glory comes down. And we just thank you for your presence to be manifest. And like Patty said tonight, Lord God, I link my faith up with hers that this said that we will not leave the same. And I believe you, God, that there is a trajectory shift in our heart and in our life and in our solical realm and in our emotions. And God, I just thank you that the playing field is leveled tonight, that we are all your girls and you love us so very much and you're going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than we could ever ask or think according to your power that worketh in us. And Lord, I even thank you just for people right now that need healing in their bodies. I just there's several people here and I just believe someone's just got lower uh, it's on the lower left part of your back if that's you just lift your hand we'll pray for you right now and then somebody else I just on the right ear I don't know it's almost like on the back like a not a deep ringing, but just in your right ear. That's you. Thank you for your hand. And then I just hear migraine headaches. I always include migraine headaches because God set me free from those. And then there's an issue with somebody's knee. So I don't know where you are right there. Just thank you. Yep, I see your hand. Someone's knee and carpal tunnel. Yes, Lord. And I just hear regulation even in someone's liver. So, Lord, I just thank you right now that you just, if those were any of you, just lift your hands right now. The healing power of Jesus is, is in this place. And, Lord, I thank you for your healing. That that's here. Father, you're moving through this place, and you've heard every petition and even things, Lord, that you didn't call out, and in another individual, and just infertility. Father, and I just thank you, and I hear weariness, and just a weeping. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And Lord, every need that's in this place, you care so very much about it. Now, I just believe for the healing power of Jesus. You paid a price on the cross. You said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You said that we are the head and not the tail, above and up beneath, blessed coming in and blessed going out and I thank you for divine reversal over every tactic that the enemy would put our way and I thank you Lord God for healing over every single one of these needs I believe you for the blood of Jesus I believe you that we already were healed according to your word and if we already were that means we are so I thank you that we activate our faith in Jesus mighty name and I believe for healing to manifest in your holy name we pray amen amen, amen. you might be like what I didn't feel healed right now but you know what? Your faith without works is dead. So you exercise your faith tomorrow. You know, move your body a little bit. Go see your doctor. Um, uh, platelets. Someone has an issue with your platelets. Just do what the medical doctor says. Doctors have been given wisdom. So we need to listen to them. You know, but I, honestly, with listening to them, still listen to a supernatural God. Because he does miracles for us. Like, I couldn't control. I had to listen to my natural doctor. But now I, I use the little remedies. Like, um, Solomon, you're just amazing. I adore you. I love you. This is my son. Well, Dave, too. Like, I, I couldn't do it by myself. Say hi to the ladies or mommy's going to take your hat off. Say hi. You want to show them how tall you are? No? He's taller than me now, y'all. He's tall. I know, right? So the doctor said... <laughs> and Solomon's totally embarrassed. He's like, your healing is, is good. You're okay. You're clear to travel again. He says, but there are some prerequisites. How many of you know what I mean? Sometimes a doctor gives you prerequisites. He's like, you have to use a wheelchair from the time you, you, know, you check in all the way to your gate. Use the wheelchair as much as possible so you don't put all the pressure here. You're not in your lower back. Don't wear high heels. Use a stool or a chair when necessary. And I'm like, oh, my God. And every time I look at my closet, I'm like, look at all those amazing shoes. Hello. And so I decided to get some cute tennies, you know. I'm like, okay, I got to have bling somewhere, you know. And then my son tried to dress me up. I used his belt. You know, I borrowed this from Solomon, trying to look all, I don't know, 
Skirt? What's that word? I don't know. What's that? Cool. Whatever these new young words are. So you have to do some of the prerequisites in order to maintain your healing. So when the Lord speaks to you about some things, maybe alkalining your diet a little bit. Like we were even talking, you know, about cutting out gluten. I just commend you on that because I was like, oh, my gosh, your skin looks amazing. What are you doing? I need this remedy. So there's prerequisites. So just like what we're going to talk about tonight, to maintaining our freedom, there are prerequisites. And, you know, part of the prerequisite is stop giving oxygen to things that should have been dead. Stop talking about the things that breed no life. Is it hard? Oh, 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 yeah. Are there times you want to just kick someone in the teeth and just tell God you found them over there? Yes. Nobody in here, everyone's like too holy, right? Just me. Are there times, you know, when you're like, oh, well, okay, Lord, like tonight I enjoyed the cupcake while I'm paying for it because I can already feel like, whoop, like I just bloated up about two, two sizes. And so I enjoyed that, so I'll lay low. But I've been fasting, and I've been trying to watch my, my food and my intake, and then in the moment that I saw it and I ingested it, it was great. But now after the fact, I'm like, I should have never done that. Do you understand? So, yes, I enjoyed it. That will be it for a while. So my prerequisite was like, oopsie, shouldn't have had the cupcake, but my eyes just really love the little origami little thing on there and that icing. Ah, it was like, yum, it's so good. Don't do those things. Another prerequisite, and I want to just read this. Let me go back to, um, go back to Galatians. Let me see, let me see. Okay, so listen to this part. Brothers and sisters, we know, we read this earlier, God has called you to freedom, but hear the call and do not spoil this gift by using your liberty to engage in what your flesh desires. I should have read this before the cupcake. Ay, ay, ay. Instead, use it to serve each other as Jesus taught you through love. What? You didn't like that. Do not spoil your gift by using liberty to engage in what your flesh desires. You know, that can be your flesh about saying something ugly. It can be in your thoughts, because a man says, in, in, in his thoughts, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh, wait, I, are you going away? Oh, okay, is he coming back? I'm like, wait, run, little Bob. Come back. Don't get a cupcake. Don't tempt your mother. <laughs> Well, you know what? Since I diverted, diverted, let's just do this now. Okay, here's some questions. So you see these little pieces of paper. We'll go back to the word in a minute. I want every single one of you, please fill these out if you have questions. You know, I don't, there's, is there any guidelines to them? And they can kind of ask anything from practical to spiritual to whatever you want, okay? So you can do this and maybe you want to know how'd you get like the best son ever in the whole world. That's a plug for your mother. Ah, oh, he's got two cupcakes. Oh, yeah, vey, the devil is a liar. So fill these out, okay? Or maybe there's something you've been wanting to know about. You don't have to sign your name. We won't call your name out unless you want me to know your name. That's fine, too. Or you want to write a little note and say, hey, pray for me for this. That's cool, too. But do me a favor and, and, and bring these tomorrow, right? That's what we're doing, bringing them tomorrow, Don. Is that right? So bring these tomorrow, and we're going to be answering all of your questions, Okay. So this is a free-for-all. So anything you've ever wanted to ask but you were too embarrassed to ask, now you can ask. Some of you won't even change your handwriting. That's fine, too. Write with your left hand. Whatever. Get your friend to write it out. Hey, type this. <coughs> but going to the Word, and I really believe in one of the new books that I wrote, I collaborated. And the reason why this book is really important to my heart, not only because it's hardback and it looks cute, but I was presented with this opportunity um, from Thomas Nelson, would you collaborate with a group of women? And I thought, you know what? Yes, because I believe in being a bridge builder, and we need each other. So, yeah, I don't, that's okay. I, you don't want to do the book by myself? Sure, let's collaborate with a group of women. But what this is, I believe this is so appropriate, not only for this season, but for the scripture where it tells you don't engage in those fleshly things. This entire book is filled with 365 pages on how not to live out of your flesh. It is all about living out of your spirit. And you get to hear from 50 amazing women of God, their lives, their journey, their stories. And I love devotionals that are practical. Like you have get a scripture, you get a little note, and at the very bottom you get a prayer. I like how-tos and a prayer. So it's super easy, super simple. 
you know, and these are going to be at the back. I'm not famous. I always love to hug people's necks and sign books, and, you know, so they're going to be at the back for you, and they are $25. $25 for a book. Oh, my God. But you know what? They're hard. Here, it's like a legit, so that, you know, this costs more money, people, to produce. But all of the, um, the proceeds from this, they go to help a project that we do called Keep a Girl in School. Do you all remember that project I talked about, the girls that, you know, they, um, they don't have uh, sanitary napkins and they don't have underwear. No, they normally only have one pair of underwear. And so I really just believe that my heart is just to help and send the resources there so that we can buy them sanitary napkins and panties. I'm like, oh, my gosh, because if they don't have them, then they get kicked out of school, and which is pretty tragic. If they do not have these simple, practical things, they get kicked out of school. They get sold into brothels, prostitute rings, all kinds of human trafficking, just jacked up stuff because they believe that men are more important than women. And I'm like, no way. Girls, we unify. So not only is the book unified, but the money goes to help unify women just like us, you know? So that's just there. And then this is your copy, too. I didn't want to forget to give that to you. I feel like Frankenstein's bride. Oh, like I can't. It's so hard to walk sometimes. My son is so embarrassed of me. He's like, Mom, you're very embarrassing. So he walks behind me, like 12 feet behind me. I'm like, Solomon! Son! <laughs> I embarrass him so bad in the airport. I know it's bad. I should read the word first, right? Okay, so with Galatians, I want you to go over to Matthew 6 because I want to give you some practicals, and I just really believe to just pray for y'all. That's kind of big on my heart. I've been praying for you since I knew the meeting was coming, and then even double doubled my prayers when I knew that I couldn't make it until this time. But I do believe that it is for such a time as this. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. If not, I just want you to say, say I can. Come on, like you mean it. I can, I will, and I must. Now, you're saying, what can I do, what will I do, and what must I do? Not ever eat the cupcakes. No, I'm just kidding. You can do all things through Christ because he strengthens you. You will accomplish your purpose and your plan for God, and you must do it because you are someone's answer. Someone is waiting on you. And if we engage in little tactics to please our flesh, that is just temporary. A lot of times we complain about what we permit. Oh, yeah, nobody here. Well, my rear end's about 20 sizes too big. Well, it's from eating 1,900 cupcakes in the last seven years. Maybe just get your took us on a treadmill and eat a carrot. You know, I don't know what you need to do. But there's no reason why we can't reframe our life. And you know how we reframe it? Our thoughts. Reframe it with our words. And I mean, I don't know about you, but how many of you have had a crazy jacked up year so far? Okay, I'm just being real. Because there has been something, and I just, I just read recently about um, the Jewish calendar and how the Day of Atonement would just pass, and, and there was a Jewish new, the Jewish New Year started. And literally, if you study that out, August, September, and October are the most hellish years, lead, uh, months rather, leading up to the Day of Atonement, the cleansing of things. It's extremely powerful. And I begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what is this, and why are you showing me this? A lot of times, you hear in the body of Christ, the last of your life shall be greater, right? Or we hear, oh, yeah, the third quarter, you're going to win. Or, oh, toward the end of the year, these next few months are going to be great. You know why I believe they're going to be great? Because scripturally and spiritually, according to that calendar, the son of a living God, Jesus Christ, literally started the new year over October 9th. A new year began. So a lot of times, I know that might be crazy for some of you to process, but instead of waiting till January, that's why I believe so many people get breakthroughs right before the end of a new year, because it technically is the beginning of one, according to the Jewish calendar. Pretty amazing, right? So why do I say that? Because we're just like a day or two into it. So I'm believing this is a new year. This is a new year in the spiritual realm. This is a new year for the body of Christ. This is a new year for us. And because you are still standing, because you've gone through opposition, maybe some of you, I even feel there's just a few of you, and you're just kind of numb in your Christian walk. Well, let me encourage you in this. God says, well, you know in James we're supposed to count it all joy when we face trials, right? But right here, according to uh, Matthew 6, rather, give to the needy. You're like, what in the world does that have to do with changing my season? Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. For if you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. But when you do, give to the needy. Don't announce it with trumpets like the hypocrites, but do it in secret so your Father might reward you openly. 
And I believe a lot of you have been doing things behind the scene, not so much the opposite of this, behind the scene. But I'm telling you, God is getting ready to show up on the scene because he's seen your heart. He's seen what's in you. He's seen the trials. He's seen the hell. Yes, I've said the word. He's seen the garbage. He's seen the tears. He's seen your what ifs. He's seen you going, God, I don't understand all this. But you know what? I can, I will, and I must. I must because if I want to soar, I've been born to fly. What is it that I have to shake off so that I can soar? And I don't, I'm not teaching on the eagle, but, you know, there's a lot of references about the eagle that their wings actually get clipped so that they can, broken wings, when, the, when their wings are broken, they clip them so that they can soar higher than they did before. So when you've been broken or you've gone through things, just be okay with what you've been walking through and take the pressure off yourself because Jesus is not a prince of pressure. He's a prince of peace. Prince of peace. And he cares about everything. So in meekness, I want you to write these few things down. I believe this is how, 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 Christine, how do I stay born to fly? Oh, yes, here we go. Born, you stay in meekness. Meekness, write this down. M-E-E-K, if you're taking notes. Mighty, emotionally stable, educate yourself, and walk in kindness. You know, meekness is the greatest strength of all. It's like, anybody ever say something yucky to you? And all of a sudden, you feel like an erupting volcano, like, <laughs> wants to come up but you like shut it down you know the more you stuff that somebody else ends up getting the backlash for you never dealing with your stuff and how many times have we let it out on the wrong person well that's I'm not flying I'm like a little chicky like waiting to fly but we're supposed to soar how do you soar you get to soar above peripheral vision above if I were to keep my eyes always up here it's a lot better to see up here more clear skies than every little detail down here but the Lord wants us to soar in those places not in a haughtiness or not where we're better than somebody else is that making sense to you but to just know that I'm not destined to fly like this Soaring is a different posture. It's an expression of just the breeze. The wings are spread. It's fresh air. It's effortless. It's moving. There's not a lot of flapping. So if you've been in a season where you feel like you've had to sustain your own self and struggle to go through this season, there is a season of ease and effort for you. Not only because we've hit a new year, but because God has destined it for you, every single one of you. It is a new season. Does that make sense to you? I want you to write this. And I and normally I'm more preachy, but I just really I was asking the Lord, I'm like, God, please help me with these things. But I really felt to lay a little bit of just natural, practical foundation so that when you go back to your notes or you go back and hear this again, you're like, wait a minute. It's easy. I don't have to talk about things. I can soar. I walk in meekness. I realize I'm someone's answer. I definitely can do this. I can do this. I will do this. And it's not a question I must because Jesus paid a price on the cross. And then he says, now, therefore, go do greater works than I. And sometimes we don't even think we can do the greater because we don't understand how to do the good. And it's just the little steps, the little baby steps on the way to where we're going. And I'm going to just believe the Lord to do something supernatural and so significant for every single one of you. And the other word the Lord put on my heart was the word fight. How many of you have heard we fight the good fight of faith? Well, I'm going to pray for you, woman of God, before I go any further, because God really wants you to be totally encouraged that he knows everything you're walking through. You are not alone. You are so highly significant to Jesus. He cares so much about this messed up situation, and they were wrong. I hear the Lord say, they were wrong. And God will vindicate you. He reigns, my beloved sister, on the just and on the unjust. And Jesus' judgment is just. You do not have to fight this battle. It belongs to the Lord. When we fight like this, we're not in a place of rest. But the best way to fight is to posture ourselves in meekness, which is great strength. To posture ourselves in our fight, which means with God all things are possible. It means that when we stay in a posture place of rest, that word rest commands results. Because it means you're not scampering around trying to figure out this problem and trying to make it right. And I get you, my sister. I get what it's like when you're like, no, 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 that's wrong, no. But there's something powerful when we stay quiet. 
And when we take the seat, when everything else is pointing right at us and we're like, all right, Lord, hit me with your best shot. Okay, God, because you know what Galatians says, our flesh, we're not gonna engage in those things because we're born to fly. We're gonna get all that God has for us. Do you understand me, woman of God? And God just wants to lavish love on you and just to encourage you to let you know when you document today and you watch how God vindicates you and he will cause a banqueting table before you in the presence of your enemies and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And the enemy is a liar. And the word of God says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. So Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for Evelyn. And I thank you, Lord, that your words are for her and not against her. Your words will like lavish on your daughter Lord and I just hear rivers of living water oh God where it's been hard to even keep her head above water Lord she can rest Lord she can rest Lord oh there's just a peace God Evelyn, you're going to walk in a supernatural peace. I just pray even over your thoughts right now. Your thoughts are lined up with the thoughts of Christ. You're lined up with Jesus. You're seated in good places. And God will make perfect all that concerns you. you all you have to do is stand still and see the salvation. That word salvation translated in the Greek means to be rescued. See the salvation of God. See the rescuing of God. And then you will say, oh, taste and see that my God is good and great is his faithfulness and his mercies endureth forever. And to bless those that despitefully use you and persecute you because the Lord says it is right to bless your enemies because in James it says the testing of your faith is working things out of you working patience getting all those things out of you so you can be mature and complete and lack no good thing so father I thank you for supernatural resuscitation over your daughter supernatural there it is oh yes Lord thank you father Thank you, like the dew in the morning. Rest upon her, Lord. Rest upon her. Oh, the struggle's over, Lord. Oh, a season of ease, 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 ease in Jesus' name. Just just who else needs that season of ease? Just has been season of ease. We just pray for that, Lord. You see every hand that's been lifted. Father, just a season of ease where it's been crazy and it's been just hard hard pressed the word says that we are pressed but but uh, i'm not abandoned persecuted rather not abandoned struck down but not destroyed lord i thank you that we know how to stand in the game i thank you god for just a season of ease for every one of your daughters lord i just i just see divine reversal divine reversal divine reversal divine reversal in jesus name thank you holy spirit Lord, and I thank you even for the, the new songs and the new ideas and the new creative realms that Dawn will walk in, Lord. The things that you've already been dealing with her heart behind the scene. Lord, I just thank you right now that even, even as they embark, I hear the first three months of 2020 will blow her mind, will amaze your daughter, Lord. It will be uncommon. And I hear the Lord, no, no striving. There is no striving. You just be and you live. In him you live and you move and you have your being. So, Father, I thank you for my sister, my friend. And, Lord, I just bless her. I thank you for strength, Lord. I thank you that her words are just sweet to your nostrils, O oh God. And I thank you, Lord, that when she sings, the breaker anointing shows up and breaks open atmospheres. And, Father, I thank you that many lives have been transformed and changed through worship. And, Lord, I thank you now that harvest would come back to her account. Back expediently and settle that matter Lord you see that matter and I hear you say it is settled in Jesus name it is settled erased and done and I hear recompense in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah Woohoo! it's okay you can get excited about the Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord I'm just gonna tell you this these acronyms for the word, the fight that the Lord showed me, and then I just want to pray over the rest of you. Is that okay? Is that all right? Sarah, just get ready to just keep journaling again, okay? 
what God tells you, you just be, be mindful. There is, oh, I'm going to bring it tomorrow. I have all these scriptures about these midnight hours and how there's all these extra blessings. Even Perry Stone has got some cool, he's, he's old school, but he's got a really amazing teaching on it. It's so phenomenal about between these certain hours when the Lord begins to wake us up and deal with our spirit and to deal with our heart. And the demonic realm is silence, but the heavenly realm is like open heavens. And that's where we get secret treasures and special things from the Lord. But it's a sacrifice to get up, right, and give up our sleep. It's a sacrifice to get out of our cozy blankie, you know, and our cute jammies and just go find a notepad and sit there and just be like, oh, I'm in the middle of the night. I got to wait, make myself wake up. But when you do, I hear the Lord say there's extra benefits. And the strategy that you've been looking for and the template that you've been leaving God for for this next season, he's just going to unfold it to you, gorgeous. Just so effortlessly, like, okay, I'm going to write this and I'm going to write that. And then don't even think twice about it. Your hand will never lie because it's going to come a download from heaven. You just begin to just like a scribe, okay, document it all. Get it all out there. Read it later. It's in the middle of the night anyway, you know. Get it out there on paper because, and when you go back and read it, it will be life and nourishment back to your soul because it's the Holy Ghost speaking right through you to give you the strategy for what you need for the next season. Does that make sense, honey? So, Father, just seal that in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord God, that there will be no disturbances and no hindrances, that her spirit is wide awake in these hours, Lord God. Father, the strategy that she needs for the next season, even all the dreams that she has over the next five and ten years. What a planner, Lord God. I just thank you that you're just going to begin to unfold every little detail for her. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe it to be done. Amen and amen. Amen. I love Jesus. Write a few of these down really quick, and then I'm going to give you a fight. Um, Isaiah 54, 14. I am far from oppression, and I will not live in fear. You know, sometimes you only need one or two scriptures just to carry you through as you're born to fly. There's going to be a few scriptures you need to stand on. You don't have to, like, stand on all 20 or 30 or 150. Just get one or two sometimes that you need to stand on. But these are the ones I really felt to just bring with me um, on my trip here. And then 1 John 4.4, 4, the Spirit of God, who is greater than the enemy in this world, lives in you. The Spirit of God, who is greater than the enemy of this world, lives in you. He's so amazing. And, of course, we've all heard this one, but sometimes you just need to reference it. 1 Corinthians 2.16 and Philippians 2.5. I have the mind of Christ. I know. Some of us feel like we've lost our mind. Anybody else? I'm like, oh, you have a, it's on the floor over there. Like when I was having all the surgery stuff, my husband was so amazing helping and serving and getting my food and warming my blanket up in the dryer. It was so amazing for three days. <laughs> so awesome. And then the rest went to blank in a handbasket. I'm like, praise the Lord, bring in my sister-in-law. See you in a month, baby. Bye-bye. <laughs> anyway, that's just a sidebar. Praise the Lord for Dave. He is awesome. <laughs> Next time he needs help, I'm just going to call a nurse, <laughs> an ugly nurse. <laughs> you're like, that's not nice. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, you're not going to be cuter than me, sister, I'll tell you that. And you're going to be miserable at cooking, but only great at your job. <laughs> you're not a good encourager. You're just a good nurse. Rah! Take this, Dave. No. <laughs> Colossians 1.13, I have been rescued from the domain and power of darkness and brought into God's kingdom. Sometimes we just have to remind ourselves, I have been rescued. Now, if we believe the scriptures, how many believe the word? We've already been rescued. So why do we stress out right now? Some of you, I believe, are just kind of in the valley of decision. And that's not a bad place. That just means you're just kind of deciding what you want to do with your life. You're trying a few things here and trying a few things there. And that's cool. Some of you are older and thinking, mm, well, this Christian life, it's good. It's fine. But you know what? I believe there's so much greater for you. So much greater. You have not been rescued to take up space. You've been rescued so you can fly. And you know when we fly, like if you think about the eagle flying and it's hungry, it can see its prey from down below. Now, I want to reverse that and give you an analogy that if we're soaring high with God, we can see down who it literally is the enemy's prey, but who we're meant to rescue. Because God's rescued us and we're high above with peripheral vision going, okay, God, I'm someone's answer. So who needs somebody? Who needs somebody? 
Last one I want you to write down, Colossians 2, 7. My life is rooted in faith in Christ, and I overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done for me. Well, God hasn't done anything for me. Well, the fact that you're still there complaining tells me that you have breath in your body. He obviously hasn't snuffed you out yet. <laughs> I think that's pretty gracious of God with your little attitude, don't you? <laughs> Sometimes I think Jesus is up there at the right hand of the Father going, Oh, you hey, we've created this thing called Christine, and we've got all the answers, but she's a little stunad, which is thick-headed and stupid and Italian. And he's up there going, Oh, yeah, yeah, stunad, stunad, stunad. No, not not really, probably. No, I really do think that sometimes, because I am thick-headed. You know, it's like I need it. Like, hello, McFly, hello, hello. But you know what? I really believe that God in the silliness of what we go through in the infinite, majestic wisdom, knowledge, and power of who he is, he sees us past ourselves. He sees us past our weakness. He sees us past our frailties. And he still says, they're mine. They're grafted in. They're my beloved. They're amazing. They're a treasure. Do you know how much God loves you? Just to understand, I mean, even the word says that nobody really knows the depth, the height, the, 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 the width of God's love. I can't even comprehend that. But I can tell you, I felt his love. And I, how many of you tangibly want to just an encounter with Jesus? I'm just going to believe that. I, just, I really feel that right now, that some of you are really craving just to know that you know. And I know there's a lot of different things, economically, politically, et cetera, in our nation. I don't want to talk about that. But we serve a very real Jesus. And he's looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's looking, coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And we can't be dirtied up myself included. I'm asking God on a daily basis, even this season, this last fasting season, God, clean my heart up. If there's any anything within me, oh God, that is unpleasing, it's, it's yucky to you, please shine the light on. Just like this, this spotlight, shine it on and get it out of my heart, God, because I want to soar with you, and I don't want anything to stop me from having all the benefits that you promised me, God. And when you keep your heart right, now, I'm not perfect. There are some times I'm like, rant, rant, up yours, buddy, but then it's like, I can hear the Holy Spirit going, don't do that, Christine. Ay, 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 she did it again. Yo, Moses, she screwed up again. She's going to need more angels to rescue her. <laughs> She's a hot mess today. Oh, here she goes. She's going to blow. <laughs> God is like, I know, I have a very vivid imagination, y'all. <laughs> but I believe that when we stop overthinking supernatural things happen, but I'm going to believe for an encounter. Let me see your hands. Father, I thank you. Your daughters are hungry, and your word says that when we hunger and we thirst for righteousness, right doing, we shall be filled. And, Lord, I thank you that you make a way when there seems to be no way. And your word says to seek you. When we seek you, we will find you. And your daughters, that word seek means to hard, fast, go after, pressed. It means to dissect, to look further beyond. And when we seek you, we do a little bit of work, nothing religious to just make our way to you, but we just are intentional about seeking you, we will find you. And Lord, I even ask, even the rest of this month, for supernatural Holy Ghost encounters for your daughters, Lord. It will be different and unique to each individual, uh, however they need to see it. Some, Lord God, it could just be as simple as a road sign as they're driving down the highway and it just speaks to them and they just feel your presence manifest. Some of them might even be through a song that they hear. Even I hear some a book. And Lord, I even hear sometimes there's, there's a book that, and I I don't know who it is, but there's a book, and you've just been propelled and, and compelled to go to this book, and you're going to hear a few different page numbers, and they seem weird to you. Just go to those page numbers. God is talking. He wants to talk to you. He wants to make himself real to you, and even some people where you're questioning, are you really real? I hear the Lord say, get ready, because I will show you once and for all my power, and you will not deny anymore that I am the first and the last and the one who is and is to come. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning beginning and the end, and where you've been desensitized in your journey with Jesus, Jesus is getting ready to reshape your thinking, reshape how you see him, and reshape your relationship because he is crazy about you, and he loves you so very much. So, Father, I thank you that you just seal this, Father. I can just hear, hear 
you saying you're going to seal it in uncommon ways, Lord. That I thank you that we just go on an amazing journey with you. Father, some of your daughters, I even just here just want to be rocked. Just to know that you're right there with them, Father. Just a soft and a gentle and a comfort, Lord. That they're just going to know that you're right there with them, Father. Even some of the girls that are single, they're going to know that you are so close to them. That they don't need any other man to fulfill them. No man needs to fulfill them but you, Jesus. You are their number one guy. So I thank you. Solidify that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, just get ready. I so believe that. There's nothing greater that I crave than the Spirit of God. I crave his presence because I can't do anything without his presence. I'm not even a good person without Jesus. I'm like a hot mess, you know? Like, yeah, can I do it without him? Yeah, okay. But really, without him, I'm nothing. It's totally the Lord, and I just really believe for new encounters for every one of you, and it's exciting. Have you ever gone um, outside a grocery store or even maybe the church parking lot and you found a little bit of change on the ground? So this is how the Lord dealt with me in, in, in a couple seasons in my life. It was like this game. I promise I was like a little girl, like, oh, I found a penny, where before I would pass by them, and then I found a dime, and then I found a quarter, and it lasted for like a week. You know, by the end of the week, I found like 100 bucks in change crazy but you know what it was so cool to me because I couldn't explain that to anybody else because they thought I would be a weirdo but now I can explain it because I just got over myself I'm like no I know God did it I had all this change it was so cool and it just made me see that I was intentional to engage in this relationship with Jesus to engage that someone else might not get it, but he knew what I needed, and I'm playful. I have a playful side, but I was walking through a real depression, a real dark place in my life, and I needed to just get out of that funk. And what like Jesus to play a game, right? To totally get me out of that silly mess. So why do I say that? Because don't think that it's silly, no matter what, and however the Lord wants to engage in you. The Word says, I take foolish things that confound the wise. And we lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways we acknowledge him. So if you're going to go into this next journey, born to fly, overthinking, sweetie, you're going to crash. Just be articulate, yes. Be wise, yes. Be brave with your thoughts, yes. Be a planner, yes. But just sometimes just shake it off and just go, I'm just going to go with you. You ever go on a Gravitron? You know what I'm talking about? The fair, those little things that you go in that make you barf all over the place? that suck you back. Well, you can't really think in there because you're like, oh, God, oh, here I go, oh, go, it's going to go. Just in a natural way without puking, just imagine yourself just going, okay, I'm just going to go with you, Lord. Oh, I'm just going to go. Don't overthink it is my point, okay? You're like, that was a terrible analogy. Well, whatever. That's just, whatever. That's the only analogy I had. So in the words fight, <laughs> I want you to just write F-I-G-H-T. To stand in the fight of faith, this is the closing point, and I just want to pray for everybody. In order to stand in that fight, faith, we must have faith, yes. But the first F is forgiveness. Forgiveness. What in the world? You want to soar? You want to fly? Forgive. Sometimes it's a baby step. Sometimes it's like a five-minute by five-minute step. Come on. I've had those heart gut-wrenching tears, those like punch you in the gut, horrible things that have been done to you or said to you, you just feel like, oh my gosh, the shocker, you know what I'm talking about? Oh my gosh, the anguish. And then you want to justify, that's why I'm like, oh Lord, but I had to realize, wait a minute, Lord, I have to go through these things because you know what, it's not about me, not that you're up there allowing all these bad things happen, although the scripture does say that we should be happy and rejoice when trials of many kind comes. He's such a comedian, isn't he? Yes, okay, because they're making you mature. As if I didn't feel now, I feel insecure because I thought I was awesome. And he's like, they're making you mature and complete, so you'll lack no good thing. God's not standing up there with a bunch of jokes. He put it in there. You know what, maybe reframe this when you're going through something and you have to walk through forgiveness, and then the I would be integrity, and then the G would be goodness, and then the H would be holiness. When we're going through things, sometimes we have to not think so highly of ourselves. And I went through a season when I just thought, seriously, God, why is this happening? Seriously? How can you allow this? Have you ever asked those questions? And it's like I just had this gentle reminder. And it's like Jesus was beaten. He was spit on. 
He had to carry the cross. They mocked him. Did you ever see the passion of Christ? Did you see him vindicate himself? Did you see him justify himself? He knew that he had to do this. He even prayed and asked his father if this cup could pass by me. But yet he knew and settled it, that it had to be done. So when you're going through something and you have to walk through these things, you know, and then the last T is just trust. Trust. You have to trust that God knows what he's doing. And if Jesus went and dealt with all those things, and he said, I've already made a way of escape. I've already paved a path for you, and go in it. And then we're reading scriptures about soaring and being born to fly and overcoming obstacles. Realize, if Jesus went through it, who do we think we are to be exempt? Really. I know I joke. I'm like, yeah, I'm awesome and amazing, and I, and I do think that, but not so highly that I'm exempt from any trial, that I'm exempt from people saying yucky things, that I'm exempt from feeling sad, that I'm exempt from believing for my family, all of them to come and love the Lord. I lost my Grammy. Um, no, I think it's been a week and a half maybe. Oh, I love my Grammy. I was so sad. And I was on the phone call with a, a staff member, and we were figuring something out. And she was already getting on my nerves. But, and the Lord was like, oh, just go to your email and find this thing and just make it right. And on the other end, thank goodness we're on the phone call because I'm like, yes, I understand. Sure, okay, I'll go to that page. I love the phone so much better because no one can really see and then God can deal with me. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, sure, no problem. Okay, I'm almost there. No, I just dropped the phone. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's kind of like, let me give you this analogy, and then I'll tell you what happened when I went to the Word about my Grammy. But, okay, so imagine this. I'm a visual person, okay? Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so we have all these little birds, right? No, you're fine, baby. So kind of, okay, this is going to be like the Holy Spirit, right? He's not a dove or a cloud with an eyeball. You know, he, he descended like a dove. He's not an alligator. You know, could you imagine we have to change our church logos? No, he's not. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove. So if you can imagine the Holy Spirit, it's not even like a dove, like sitting on your shoulder, okay? So imagine the Holy Spirit. We're born to fly, but we need the Holy Spirit to help us. So the Holy Spirit sits on your shoulder. He's always reminding us of the word because when we have a relationship with him, he's always wanting to remind us of things and talk into our ear. He's super close to our ear. You know, and so someone ticks you off, you know, kind of the lessons I'm still learning. I'm such a work in progress. God's, listen, y'all, if God can use jacked up me, surely there's hope for you because I'm way worse of a hot mess than any of y'all. I can guarantee it. <laughs> and so I, Holy Spirit sitting here, and it's like a kind word turns away wrath. And then you've got the devil on the other side. No, it doesn't. Just say it. They're so annoying. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No, it's not. It's an irritant. Gosh, don't you hate her. Oh, Jesus says, love your enemies and bless those that despitefully use you and persecute you. And you're like, caca, caca. <laughs> you're like, you lose your dove. <laughs> Come on, people. You're like, oh, shoot, where the Holy Spirit go? you got to imagine when we act like that, he just goes away. But he's not too far away. We have to go get him. Be like, come on, Holy Spirit. Just let me remind myself that the Lord's with me. Okay, here I go. So maybe you dropped your dove, and your dove is dirty, and it's been stepped on, and it's on the floor, and you're like, hold on, I need the Holy Spirit. And you pick them back up, clean them off, and put them back on your shoulder. Just get on with it, and then learn to fly, okay? So we got to take the pressure off. But I want you to get the visual. The Holy Spirit is always here. But which voice do we listen to when we deal with fear? when we deal with questions, when we deal with situations. And it was just kind of like that day, like bleh, getting on my nerve, and then I'm opening up my email trying to find something. And I, my Uncle Charles, God love his soul, he sends me an email. Your grandmother just passed away an hour ago. No, right? So dysfunctional. Like our family has put the fun in dysfunctional, I'm telling you. No, I love my Uncle Charles, but it was so, and I just, I was in shock. And I literally on the other end, I'm like, oh! 
like I, I screamed and I had to get off the phone. It was actually good because I think God knew I was going to cuss any minute. And so he's like, read the email. Grammy just died. Don't cuss. Caw, 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 caw. Oh, no. So I was totally sad. Yes. I cried. I'm still a little sad. I have moments, you know, occasionally where I think of how amazing she was. But you know what I loved about my Graham? She always brought me back to the word. She'd always encourage me. And she, she would say, shake a leg, honey, shake a leg. I don't know. She had these little funny little sayings. She's like, shake a leg. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, just shake it off, Christine. She goes, I got to remind you of what Jesus did for me. She's like, I used to be on booze, and now I'm on the Bible. <laughs> She's like, don't ever forget where you've come from. And I say to you, we're born to fly, and we can never forget where we've come from. We have to remember that but by God's grace, every single one of us, we're going to be challenged. We're going to go through things in life. Our feelings are going to get hurt sometimes. But you know what? It's a choice to let it go deep down. We're human beings. Yes, we're going to be tempted. We're going to cry. We're going to feel all kinds of emotions. That's okay. You can even be angry and sin not. The Bible says it. But it's when we allow those things to suppress our sore. Nothing should suppress your sore. We're made to soar. And so just be mindful of the Holy Spirit. And be mindful of what you go through. And be mindful of what you've come from. And when we put those simple little things... We know how to stay in the fight, the forgiveness, and the integrity. That means doing the right thing when no one else wants to. That means saying the right thing when it's not always popular. That means walking in goodness when you just want to... Come on. And holiness. Holiness isn't religion. Holiness isn't wearing a long dress and, you know, a muumuu and, like, putting your hair in a bun. <laughs> holiness is just being who God says that we should be. In, in a package where we're God's vessel, where we represent the King of Kings. It's a reverence. It's a holiness. It's a reverence of His Spirit. And I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And I've made plenty of mistakes where I have. And so if that's you, then you can just hit the reset button right now where you are. And just say, okay, God, thank God today's a new day. And some of you, you might even have to hit the reset button three times a day. But you know that's okay. It's totally okay. So if you're soaring and you're like, and you tripped up, just hit the reset, get your wings back out. Just it's okay. It's going to be okay. And I just want to pray for everybody tonight that wants prayer because <laughs> I believe the charge of what I'm to release. And remember, it's nothing about Christine. But I always remember praying, even as a young girl. I, I think there's a couple of you in here, and you need to be reminded of what you prayed from a little girl before life happened, before stuff happened before that guy jacked you up, or a co-worker, or finances. I remember always praying, and I didn't really understand what I prayed. And I'm like, Lord, I want the ones that no one wants. I want the unlovable. I want the ones that people toss away. I want the ones that are broken. I want the ones that need to know who they are in Christ. And I want the ones that need the biggest and the most amount of love. And I remember saying this for years and years and years and years and years. Well up until my 20s when I started hitting storm after storm after storm. And then the Lord had to remind me. And my Grammy had to remind me. Just shake a leg. Shake a leg. It's going to be okay. Like, shake it off. Because you prayed those things. And then when trials come, do you actually think you're going to be exempt? You're born to fly. So we're going to go through things. But when we go through things that don't destroy us, they make us strong. And then when they make you strong, you then have the impetus. Because there's power. There's boldness. There's an authority that you walk through. And there's a price that you pay for your anointing, for your own anointing, not somebody else's, your own. And when you pay that price, you literally have a radar doo -doo 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 -doo, to detect it on somebody else. And then when you overcome it, there's authority to go in an atmosphere and shoo, shift it because the Holy Ghost does it. He just uses you as a vessel. And I know that I know that there is an authority in my life and to infuse uncommon stamina and strength to be able to overcome anything with great joy. It does not mean that I don't have sad or bad days. I think I've made myself quite clear about the reality sometimes of my life. But it does mean that I understand that that lasts for this long a time. And I quit.
quickly have learned to dismiss it because it's okay because God will invade my heart and my space and I just really saw in, in Born to Fly just with every one of you that wanted it I literally saw like a rod like a steel rod just going down the back of God's girls and just kind of strengthening you I can't totally stand straight up because I'm still I feel like the hunchback in Notre Dame because I'm still got my healing but strong and straight up shoulders squared back and then that just gives you that extra bit of strength to soar does that make sense to you and so if that's you <laughs> and you say yeah Christina I want you to pray for me you can um what's best to do have them stand at their seat or kind of what do you prefer oh yeah do you want to do that now or after do you want to do that now and then I'll pray okay and I'm going to pray for this one lady real fast just because I don't want to miss this and um hi Karen how are you good I'm gonna pray for you okay and then we pray for the rest of the people you know so Heavenly Father I thank you you know for Karen and, and Lord I can just see you just kind of coming alongside your daughter and putting your arm right around her God and I just hear you see that she's not alone and, and you really love her and you really care about her Father, and the things that even have touched her heart even through this evening some of them have just been triggers and reminders God but I just hear you say that you're for her not against her and there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus and Lord I just thank you for a reset and Lord, I even thank you for joy, that she's going to really embark on a season of joy. Lord, just where there's been seasons that are topsy-turvy, I just hear joy. And this might sound silly, Karen, but I mean, there's a, a movie by Bette Midler, and there's a song in there. It's called Under the Boardwalk. And I just keep hearing that song, you know, Under the Boardwalk. And everything is, is water under the bridge. And maybe go listen to that song, because I think there might be something, you know, in there that silly but might just resonate with you does that make sense so lord i just thank you for karen i thank you for your sweet presence upon her life and lord i just thank you that the rest of this year is going to be greater than its former seal your promises to your daughter because you love her so much in jesus name amen amen we'll just i'll turn it to pastor patty and then however she wants you know we'll just pray for every single one of you that want prayer and i'm here as long as you want to be here you know, we have the privilege just to sew back into uh, Christine's life and the ministry. And I, she already explained with, to you what she does with the, uh, the money with her ministry, too, that we um, not only with, you know, finances that we all need, but giving out to these uh, precious girls, too. So we just want to bless her tonight for coming. I know that uh, she could be home. Most of us would probably, like, I'm taking, like, months and months off just to heal and stay at home but you know what she is on the road in, in spite of her si circumstances and so I just believe we just really need to give um, just really bless her tonight and you know when we bless others God blesses us and you know that harvest comes back to us I love Luke uh, 6 38 that says give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will, will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You know, and, you know, if you need a great harvest in your life, let's uh, uh, just sow that harvest tonight that you're looking at. Pray over it as you're giving the offering tonight. And we have the guys that are going to be coming around with the offering bags. And I'm just going to pray, and then I'm going to just give the uh, mic right back to Christine so we just can continue to flow in this atmosphere. Father God, we thank you so much for bringing Christine here. And Father God, we just pray that you continue to bring just healing into her body, supernatural healing. And Father God, we just uh, pray that you would just bless your people as they give, that harvest would come back into their lives. And Father God, we just pray that uh, this ministry you put up on Christine will just continue just to go forth, touching so many women out there that are hurting and are broken, and, and they need to hear her story. And we thank you for that. In Christ's name we pray.